All right, here we go. We have one of the the big artists that's emerged in the last few years, Little Skies. Yo, Welcome yo, to Vlad TV. What's good, bro? Hey, man. Um, number one, congratulations on your catalog. Thank uh, you. It's one thing to have a big song that gets a couple million views, but you have like a dozen songs in the, in the hundreds of millions. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I'm thankful. <laughs> I'm thankful for show. Well, it's quite a long journey. I mean, I went into your whole story, you know, especially your dad's story and everything else like that. Yeah. And you have really, uh, you know, a rags to riches uh, kind of situation. So, yeah. you know, I know you have a new project out and, and I want to lead to that, but I really want to get into your whole story, if that's okay with you. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So you grew up in Pennsylvania. I was born in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, but I grew up pretty much my whole life in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. Okay, and you have a very unique first name. Yeah, Demetrius. Yeah, I did a Google search. You're the only Demetrius I could find uh, on yeah. the planet. Yeah, shout out to my mom, too. Shout out to my mom for that. She named me. Okay, is there like a meaning behind that name? Nah, she was going to name me Demetrius, but instead she took the D out and added a K and put an I instead of the E. Okay, so very dope. Just, yeah, very dope. Something different. Now you have an Italian mother and a black father. Yeah, my mom's white okay. and Italian. Yeah. Okay. Now, growing up, were there a lot of other mixed kids around you, or were you one of the only ones? Um. Yeah, my brothers, like my whole family's like that. We're all mixed, pretty much like black and white, all of us. Okay, and I guess there's five kids. Yeah. There's a lot more now. I don't know how many total. <laughs> but yeah, in the house, in the household, yeah, like growing up, what I have three brothers. I had three brothers in my in my house that I really lived at and a sister. So yeah, it was a lot of us. Okay. And um you had you got your real dad and then you have a, a stepdad, I guess you're your Yeah, mom, that's what I'm point? saying. I got different sisters and sets of different brothers too, you know what I'm saying? It's like all over the place. Okay, so growing up, do you think things were more or less stable or do you have a kind of rough growing up? Yeah, I mean, growing up, yeah, we always had, like, we always, my mom always, that's something my mom didn't play about. Like, my mom, my stepdad, shout out to him, um, even my dad, like, everybody kind of, you know, everybody kind of played a role in helping and making sure we had the certain things that we need. But, you know, as you grow up and stuff and you want more and you want to do more and you got your own, you want to make your own way and all that. So, yeah. Yeah. But we was pretty okay. yeah, we was pretty good. Like they made sure. As long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, you know what I mean? You get taken care of. Well, you started freestyling at age three? Yeah, I was just messing around. I was probably like four. I think my my pop said I was like four. I think he got the recording or something, but and my dad was always doing music or when I would go around my dad, when I would be around him, that's what he did. So like Anytime I go around him, that's kind of like what I wanted to be, what I wanted to do, because I thought it was cool, because that's what he was doing with his friends. Right. And your dad is a rapper as well. Yeah, uh, he that was. originally went by the name Dark Skies. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Hence the name Lil Skies. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So I guess he took you to the studio at age four to start yeah. recording. Yeah. I think I was like four or five. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty young. I mean, most people don't remember that time, but do you remember those early days in the studio? I don't remember those times exactly, but I do just remember being nervous. I was nervous for sure. <laughs> okay. So, so you're growing up and well, I guess by around 10 years old, your dad wasn't living with you, but you guys were still very close, right? Yeah. I mean, me and my dad, yeah, we kind of had me and my dad's relationship was like, it was kind of like, you know, like shaky because I ain't, me and my dad, we just bump heads a little bit, but music is the thing that kept me and my dad together. Like, that's how we connected. So anytime, pretty much like, I would see my pops and stuff growing up, like, that's how it would be. It would be like, yo, we at the studio, or yo, that's what he's doing. Because that's the, at the time, you know, my early years, that's what my dad was chasing. He was chasing the, you know, trying to become, you know, doing this thing. He was doing his music thing and working and stuff, so. Well, I just want to talk about, and this is something your dad actually made a, a little documentary about. Yeah. There was the, the explosion. That yeah. Happened. Yeah. Uh huh. I think I was 11 or 12. 11. Yeah. Well, you see these videos of your dad now. Yeah. Right? He, and you look, okay, 
you could tell something probably happened, but he looks fairly fairly normal. But yeah. then you looked at the pictures of what he looked like after the explosion, and it was different. absolutely crazy. Yeah, it was different. Yeah, it was different. Here you are, 11 years old. You go to the hospital, and you see your dad looking like that. Like, yeah. Do you remember what you went through? Yeah, I mean, it was different. See, it's where my dad's accident, too, it made us a lot closer, too. You know what I mean? It made us a lot closer. It made me even, I was young at the time, but it made me look at life differently, too and value it differently. But I remember when I went there, I just didn't really know what was going on. Like my mom came and got me out of school and I just was sitting there. Um, I She came and got me. I was like, why is she come and get me out of school? This is random. And she came and got me. She's like, yeah, your dad's been hurt. He's in the hospital. So I go get in the car and I just started crying while she's signing me out. But I didn't know I was crying because I didn't really know what was going on. But I just had a feeling it was bad. And then when I went and seen him and stuff, um, I went I went up there and stuff. My grandfather, everybody was there. And my grandfather walked back in the room first before me. And um, he walked in the room and I seen him. I watched him walk down the hallway and he looked like, opened up the curtain and looked at my dad and he turned around and started crying and like walked away. I guess cause he didn't want my dad to like, you know, see him crying and stuff. My dad couldn't really see at the time, but I, that's when I knew it was bad. Cause my grandfather was a tough man. And I never really seen him cry much in my life till like later on. But like that situation right there, that was like the first time I actually seen him like really break down. So that's why I knew it was bad. And then when I seen him, I just was, I was so young, bro. I'm keeping honest. I was just in shock. I ain't know like my emotion stuff was weird. Like when I seen him and stuff, I wasn't like crying or nothing. I just didn't know. I was like, I was confused really. I'm like, what's going on? Cause that's a whole nother different level. It's like seeing somebody like seeing you, your kids see you all your life and then you get burnt one day and they come to the hospital and your whole face is like melted off and you ain't got the same skin color, your hair's cut off, everything. It's just crazy. Like, it was like different. Yeah, like I said, he showed pictures in his uh, in his documentary yeah. and I was just like, oh, wow. Yeah, like, it's crazy, bro. It was crazy. I, I can't, and he couldn't even, I guess his eyes were bandaged originally. He couldn't even see. Yeah, and, it's just um, a swelling. His face was so swelled up because his face got majority of the burns, third degree burns to his face. So if you know about burns, third degree burns is like some of the worst burns you can have. That's like one of the top of the tops, bro. Yeah. And I guess it was just a, he was wearing like a nylon jacket and like there was like electricity and ended up yeah. touching the jacket and Yeah, yeah, he up. was at work. I don't I don't fully like know like his job. I actually went back there with him um one time and we like talked to the people and stuff that actually saved his life and stuff. That shit was cool. That shit was like really cool, but um yeah, I guess he was like he was at work and he was doing something with like these paints and these chemicals and he was dumping them uh the paints or the chemicals whatever it was into the into the ground or whatever like this big barrel he was dumping it and i guess his his jacket had like that what you say it was the um it's like nylon nylon yeah his jacket had the nylon in it and i guess it caused like static it caused like a reaction to make it like heat like explosion it just like they collided together so when he was pouring it down he said he felt like some heat coming up like real quick and he said it's just like he looked down and then he when he looked down the explosion it was just blowing up like it was just boom like a like exploded tight right in his face and just blew him up in the air yeah and i guess he changed his name to burnt man now yeah that's what yeah that's that's i guess it's a little logo now and stuff yeah yeah well i mean i guess uh i mean i guess you own it yeah, um, my dad. Yeah, yeah no, nah, he know. owns it. He embraces it. He don't. That. He don't regret nothing about it, though. My dad's a soldier. Like it's beautiful seeing where he's at now, and stuff, and seeing how close. Like I'm very close with my dad now. So is my little sisters. They're very close with them. We're all close. I'm even close to my little sisters over there. I'm close. To, like it, it's beautiful now. You know what I mean? It's a beautiful story. Yeah, no, I mean, he kept on living his life. Yes, sir. Uh, kept, kept pushing forward. Music. And like you said. I guess he has a new baby. Yeah, <laughs> and like you said. Ago. And like you said, too. And like you said, he was, um, he, he, bro, he's one of them. My dad's one of them people. Like, he, that's why I learned in my life. You know what I mean? It's a lot of obstacles in life and stuff like that. My dad's one of the people, though. He ain't let that stop them. And it's a blessing for his situation because some people, they get burned on their face, bro, like that, how he did. They don't even get their full skin pigment back and, like, get their full color back my dad pretty much almost got like his full entire color back on his face so it's a blessing yeah. and i thank god for that yeah man it's inspirational yeah absolutely for sure okay so you keep doing music and uh i mean at one point you're doing like odd jobs to try to pay for studio time i guess you worked at mcdonald's at one point yeah i worked at mcdonald's for a year my first job was when i was 14 at um 
Jade's Cottage Cafe in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. I was 14. It was like two minutes from uh, down the street from my house. Um, I worked there for like a year and a half and then I was just chilling for a couple months. And then I got, I, you could work at McDonald's when you're 16. So when I was 16, I started working there. I think you worked there when you're 15, but I started when I was 16. Okay. And when did the tattoos come? Were you still, were you under 18 when you got them or over 18? Yeah, I was under 18. I was like 17 okay. when I started getting hit, hit up. I got my first one when I was 16. And I think I got a couple little more. But then I was like 17. And I guess your mom took you to go get your first tattoo? Yeah, she took me, yeah. And she said, uh, do whatever you want, just don't do your face or your neck or your hands. Nah, not at that time, no. She, oh no, she didn't say all that? <laughs> nah, at that time she was like, at that time she took me because my friend, my friend had got, this is my friend at the time, like a close around that time, my friend had gotten a, um, uh, he, my friend had gotten very sick or whatever. He caught meningitis or whatever, and he ended up losing his leg or whatever. And it was, it was this long process with that. That's a whole nother story too. But um, he said something to me though, when I went and seen him and stuff, and he was like, tomorrow's another day, but it's not promised. So I told my mom I wanted to get that tatted because this is like my brother, you know what I mean? He's like my brother. So I told her I wanted to get that on me. She knew how close I was. And it, it was like, it's kind of something, my mom know about me, like even with the music that I was at the, Point when I was like 16, I was at that point where I was like, have my mind set up. I'm gonna do music. You can't tell me nothing. And I told her about that time. I'm like, mom, I'm a, I gotta get this one. Like this one's very meaningful. And she understood it. That's what's dope about my mom too. Like she ain't trying to. She she wanted. She rather take me than me go hide it from her. So she took me to get that one for my first one. Well, you're still in high school during this time. Yeah. And you're you're serious about the music. Yeah. And. You know, what's, what's interesting is when I looked into your background, a lot of people would assume by looking at you, okay, this guy was probably a high school dropout, never took school seriously, but you were actually a straight A student. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, I wasn't a straight A student. <laughs> you know, I, I took honors classes and I, I went just to did my homework, bro. I did I, my I wasn't homework. Straight A's, so you were really at the top, top of the class. Yeah. I wasn't at the top, top of the class. I got like A's and B's. Okay, but you were but you were taking school seriously. So yeah, if you from wanted my, to pursue, you yeah, know, the corporate I, see, I looked at it like this, bro. World, I look, I looked at it like this. Like I look like I looked at it like this. If I take care of what I got to take care of, then I can do what I want to do. You get me? So like my mom, my mom and them, they just wanted us to get good grades. Of course, you know what I mean. I remember it was like I was in sixth grade or something. I gave my mom my report card. And I got all A's or whatever. And then um, I just, she she looked at me and she just told me how proud she was and da da da. And you know, you're gonna be the one to, you know, do something, da da da. Just, you know, tell me things. So I'm like, I just looked at that. I love my mom. I cherish my mom. Like, so I just, I did that for her, bro, like school and stuff. It's not, I ain't really want to, but I did it. I did my homework and stuff. You know, I didn't do that good on tests, but I did my homework. I did my assignments and all that shit. That's really how I got the good grades and stuff. And I would do like little extra credit stuff and stuff like that. But yeah, I just like, I don't know. It made me feel a little good. It made me feel good. Cause like, I guess I was doing it somewhat for myself too, but it was really for my mom, you know, my parents and my people to see them proud, to make them proud. Well, your first project, you did that with your dad. Yeah. My this first project Sky, ever. Volume one. My first, you said uh, my first project. Yeah, well, The Birth of Sky is volume one. That's the one you did with your dad first? Yeah, no. So my first, the first um, mixtape I ever did was a mixtape. It's called Little Sky's The Freestyles. And I was 11 years old. And then I did another one when I was 12, Little Sky's The Freestyle, uh, volume two. And then I did, um, then I had, dang, I don't even remember, bro. I got so many tapes, bro. Oh my gosh, now I'm thinking back. Cause I was selling my mixtapes when I was 11 years old in school. Like I, I bought 50 CDs for $50. No, how much I bought? I bought 50 CDs or something. I don't know how much I got them for. I think 20, $20. And then I, my dad, because my dad was showing me how to do the marketing and shit. So we, we made the covers and stuff, printed them out on the computer, put those in. So I think all together was like $30 I invested, but I got 50 CDs. So I made $20. I sold all the CDs in one day, but I made $20. So I don't know. I just felt good because I was like, yo, I sold all my CDs. So, and people bought them for a dollar. My mom's, my mom was selling them at work. 
doing all types of shit. Like my dad, everybody in my family was just looking out, like selling them here. They can't, hey, check my son out, check him out. Dah, dah. And then, yeah, Yo. I have a lot more projects. Me and my dad, we did a project. It was a uh, father-son talk. That's the project that we did. And I was a little bit older then. That was a project for me and him for like bond. And like I told you, me and him, we was close. Like music was the way me and my dad connect. Like, you know what I mean? That was our really, like our connection, connection. So like that project was us like opening up to each other and like bonding and making music together. That shit was dope though. I forget how old I was when I made that, but I was a little bit older. Probably like 15 or something. Was there a point when you guys realized that you were better than your dad or you're starting to kind of surpass him a little bit? Or was no, it always like a competition? No, nah, it was a point. My dad always said this. My my pops always told me this. He was like, um, it's going, you know what, Kai? He's like, it's going to come a point one day we're going to bump heads and you're going to be like, dad, you know, I'm not fucking with this shit. Like, I got to do my own thing. I got to be in my own lane. So shit, it did come a point, bro. I think I was like 14. Yeah, I think I was 14. Uh, what was I, 14, 15, 14, 15. I think I was like 15 or 16. That's when I told my pops. I think I was like 16. I told him, I'm like, yo, you know, I died like no more. Like, you know, you're not doing nothing for my, not like nothing like that. I'm like, I don't want, I want to do my own thing now. You know what I mean? I got to find my own way. I want to make my own music and stuff. Cause bro, growing up for a while, like even I was still a kid. So I was doing music, bro. When it wasn't cool for little kids to cuss. You get what I'm saying? So like, it wasn't, and then my parents too, they wasn't playing with that. So I wasn't 14 and 13 and shit, cussing in my music and 15 cussing. Like I wasn't allowed to do that. And this at a time too, shit changed so quick, bro. Cause now it's like, you got 14 and 13 year olds saying whatever the fuck they want. They can say whatever, but for me, it was like, I still had that restriction. So bro, once I like broke, once I like broke away from my dad and he knew what it was, my dad was cool about it actually. It wasn't no argument and one night. He's like, all right, that's what you want to do. Then go ahead and do it. You gotta, hey, you gonna do it yourself though. Go ahead, go do your thing. So shit, after I got out that leash, bro, I just started turning up shit. I started making what type of song I would start really talking about whatever the fuck I want to talk about. I started just really experiencing and experimenting with everything and putting it all in the music. Just started really having fun, like finding myself with the music and stuff, you know? Well, you graduate high school. Yeah. Uh, and then you go to Shippensburg University in Pennsylvania? Yeah, I went to Shippensburg, yep. I went to the college for like a month. I think I was there for like two months. Yeah. Okay, and then you opened up from, for a Fetty Wap at one point. Yeah, that was like a month into the, like the college. That was like two, three weeks out and into college. I just got there type shit. Okay, and after doing that show, I guess you dropped a couple of mixtapes and then by that point you dropped out. Yeah, no, after I wasn't even in college long, bro. I was only in college for like, I went to classes, bro, for like two weeks and I stopped going for like the last month and a half. And I was just going to parties and shit. I was pretty much partying. I was going to parties and shit, like playing my music. I was just in the studio, whatever, just, you know what I mean? I was pretty much just doing my music shit, bro. Like I was using the dorm. I was just staying at the dorm type shit. Like, I went to I went to classes, like I said, for like, I think it was like two, three weeks, but I had pretty much like, my grades and shit was still good. It was so weird, but I did all that shit. And then I was, after that, I was just chilling and working on music and everything and still doing that. And I stayed there. And then the Fetty Wap opportunity came up while I was still going to class though. This isn't like the two, three weeks while I was still going to class. So look, I did the Fetty show. And what happened was I did the Fetty show and I'm like, shit, bro. Like people started really noticing me. Like I was walking around campus normal shit, but then people looking at me like, yo, that's the kid that opened up for Fetty. Da, da, da. And I just felt like, yo, bro, like this is the time of God telling me anything. I got to go. I got to go ahead. I got to leave here and really focus on this shit now because people's really fucking with me. So I, I left after like, yeah, like a month and a half, two months. Well, in 2017, which yeah. I guess is slightly after leaving college, that's when you dropped uh, Red Roses with Landon Q. Yeah, what was it, Craig? Was it 2017 or 2018? It was 18. Yeah, 18 it was, was 2018. Red Roses. Okay, yeah. sorry. 18 was Red Roses. Yeah, because I, I was out of college for um, a little bit until Red Roses came out. I was still out of college. I was pretty much back home doing my regular shit, bro. I was just back home doing my music shit, doing my little shows at the um, Thought Lot in Shippensburg. Like, I was just doing that. After that, after that, after I dropped out, I just came back. I didn't even fully drop out too. I like signed out, so if I so I could come back because they didn't want me to drop out. They didn't want me to leave the school. It was weird. Well, Red Roses, 
between YouTube and Spotify has 600 million views. That's hard. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even counting, you know, the, the SoundCloud numbers or the, the Apple Music numbers. So, I mean, you could say probably a billion people listen to that song. Yeah, that's hard. I never thought of that. <laughs> when you put that together, did you know what you had or no? We was making a song like, it's crazy because I, I seen a video, I seen a video or something like on Instagram on my Snapchat. Like I was, I wasn't showing the process of me making a song, but I was showing me listening to the beat. And I was like, I sent a video. I was like, oh yeah, I'm about to make a hit to this one. And then I, and then I recorded the chorus or whatever. And it showed me like listening to the chorus. But nah, bro, I was sitting in the studio when I made it because Landon, Landon was down. Landon was in the studio. I told him to come down. Um, I was working on this song. I'm like, yo, I got this song. You got to get on. So Landon came down and we was working on this song and we did it. And I was just listening to it. Yeah, bro. I, I just felt different about that one. It was a weird feeling. It was weird. That, show, that song, like I kind of, I knew, but I ain't know that though. I knew, but I'm going to keep it real. I ain't know it's going to be like that. Well, the song starts out, uh, and I got all the drugs in the world that you need. We get high to pass the time, a bitch I ain't no fiend. And, and the song starts off with that, and that's your biggest song. Did that end up kind of branding you as like the drug rapper in a way? Um, no, nah. no, nah, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, you know, and and you know, drugs is sort of a theme throughout the music. Yeah. You know, yeah, various songs. Um. You know, do you feel like you had any issues with drugs back then? No, nah, no. Nah. I think I was just, I smoked hella weed. That was it. I was smoking okay. hella weed. That was my full thing. Okay. Now, when did the face tattoos come? Was it around that time or no? Um. Yeah. Hell yeah. I was already having face tats. Like when I met Landon, when Landon met me, when, when me and Landon linked up, I already had like the face tats. I still already had like my own little wave and shit. Okay. Because you said something interesting, and, and I guess you actually said this in the song, Welcome to the Rodeo, about, you know, when you got the face tats, it made you kind of commit fully. You know, you knew you couldn't get a job after that. Yeah, for sure. So it was one of those things where like, all right, I'm just going to jump in both feet. There's yeah. no plan B. Yeah, pretty much, bro. Like, I took the chance because even where I come from, like, people don't look like that around here, like, type shit. People are kind of... You know what I'm saying? Now it's probably definitely more people with more face tats and shit around my area. But like now, um, back then, yeah, bro, I just wanted to, that's what it was making, <clears throat> giving myself, like telling myself, cause every day, you know, when you wake up in the mirror, you got to look at that. Like, yeah, bro, you did that. And there's no turning back. So that's what I just looked at it as like, yo. And it's weird. I just like the art, bro. Like I, I like um the ink, bro. I like artwork and shit like that. Like I like music. I like paintings and shit like that. So I just use my bodies like a canvas type shit. That's yeah. eventually what it turned into. Yeah, I mean, Lil Uzi Vert said pretty much the exact same thing. He said he went to go apply for a job, he didn't get it, and then he went straight to the tattoo parlor and got his face all tatted up and said, okay, this is gonna prevent me from getting a, a job and yeah. I'm gonna have to do the music. I was else. already, it's weird, bro, cause I'm gonna keep it real with you though. I was already in the, like, I felt like I was in the phase. I was like constantly, I wasn't going up quick. But I started to like this is the phase where I was like start I was like known so I just like was branding myself you know what I mean like I was just building up like as time was going on I was just building up like okay I see things are still elevating so shit I'm still getting face tats because like it's not that I'm using these face tats as like oh for people nah it's just okay I'm getting them because this is what I like shit and the people seem like all right they seem to like fuck with it you know what I mean so shit yeah. Are you done or are you going to keep tatting your face up? Um, yeah, I think I'm done now. I don't know. I don't got that much room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got that much room left now, bro. That's what I'm saying. I can't even tell you how many I got. I never even uh, counted them. It's a lot, though. Okay. So you put out Red Roses. Yeah. And that blows up. Yeah, we dropped it on SoundCloud. a bunch of other songs that are... We dropped it on SoundCloud. And me and Landon, yeah. bro, me and Landon, like, see, Landon, and Landon taught me a little something, too. Landon's very... Landon's very uh patient too with the music. Like I'm like that too, but he wants shit to be right. Like 
And I agree with him for that song, bro. We got that song mastered probably like, I don't even know how many times, bro, but we got so many different master versions of that song before we got the right one, if you understand what I'm saying, because we just wanted it yeah. to be right and wanted everything to hit right. So we went through a little process with that song, like getting it out. And we probably sat on it for like a little month or something before we actually put it out, just trying to, but the crazy thing is though, bro, we just like, I think we probably showed a little couple previews or something, maybe playing it on Instagram or something. And then we just dropped the shit on SoundCloud, bro. And then it just, like, I don't know what happened. That shit just turned up, like, out of nowhere. I was like, what the fuck? This is different. Well, it ended up catching the attention of Atlantic Records. Yeah. Yep. A hell of records, bro. I- All them record companies. <laughs> All of them. Oh, so 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 everyone started bro, calling Bro, I had meetings with everybody, bro. Okay, so shout out and, to and I, was, I was listening to a video that your dad made, yeah. and he said that it took you 15 years to get a record deal. Yeah. 15 years of of working on your craft. Yeah. And, and you were how old at the time when you signed? I think I was 19. 19. So from four years yeah, old was to 19, 19, you were yeah. working on this. Yep. How did it feel to sign that sign that contract? Shit, it was lit. It was lit, bro. I ain't even gonna hold you. It was lit. So I knew what it was, though. I knew what it was. Like it was lit. I'm gonna tell you like this. It was fun at the same time. It was fun, but I'm like, shit. All right, let me get to work, though. That's what I'm saying. Like it was like, all right, let me get to work. Cause people don't know, bro. When I signed, I didn't even have uh. When I signed, I didn't even have Life of Dark Rose done. Like I did that shit mad quick. Like super quick. Right. And then you two put weeks. it out. I recorded that shit in two weeks, yeah, pretty much. Yep. Crazy. Fact. Okay. So then January 10th, 2018, your major label mixtape, Life of a Dark Rose, comes out. Yep. And it peaks at number 10 on the charts. Yeah. How did that feel? A 19 year old, you've been working on this literally your entire life, and you have a top 10 album. Shit, it felt good, bro. Honestly, it felt good. Like, I didn't even know how to feel at the time. I'm tell you to be honest. Like, I was in so many emotions. I'm like, damn, like, it seemed real, but it didn't seem real at the same time. Like, it was, it was, it was like, damn, like, this shit's crazy, bro. Like, literally, where I come from, that's why I was, I guess I was just in shock still, kind of. You know what I mean? Like, even when it did that, because I'm like, damn, bro, what the fuck is going on? Like, this shit is crazy. Like, yeah, I know I work. I put in the work and everything for this. I'm like, yo, like, this is just, it's just beautiful, bro. Like, I'm very thankful, bro, because I put in a lot of hard time for this shit, bro. Like, I've been doing this my whole life, if you get what I'm saying. So i never done nothing else. So to see it, like, work out and turn out better is, like, turn out how you foresee it. But I didn't even see it being as big as it is. It's like, bro, it's, it's fire. Well, yeah, and that album had a lot of hits. Uh I mean, of course, Red Roses that we talked about, but like Lust, yeah. that's at like almost 400 views on yeah. uh, on Spotify. Nowadays, which is my favorite song that you've done, that's at like 400 views. So you pretty much, in that two weeks, you put out some smashes. I was looking back at it, me and my dad saw my dad the other day, I'm like, damn, bro, like that's, that was, that was major. <laughs> that was major for sure. Yeah, I mean, Lust went platinum. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure some of those other songs went platinum as well, right? Yeah, pretty much the whole shit. So now, now you have platinum plaques as a 19 year old with yeah. a top 10 album with a major label deal. I mean, you're coming. I mean, you were never like broke, broke, but you're coming from a very modest background to now. The spotlight is on you. You're you're really one of the main guys out there right now. Uh, I mean, was it? sometimes too much to, to deal with or, or were you just loving the ride? Hell yeah, bro. Shit. I'm a I'm a human. I'm a human mm-hmm. being, bro. I, I think people be feeling the real that realize that sometimes about like artists and people. Like, bro, I'm a normal ass kid that's been just loving doing what he do. Like this is what I do. And I come from this and like a matter of like this, bro. That's what people understand. Like, yeah, it took how like you said like 15 years it took. That's what people don't see that part. But then the part when it goes like this, it happens so quick. Like when you're blowing up and you're getting that so quick. So you don't really have that much time to like change and adapt. You just gotta go with it. 
So that's what, like, me, I'm going to be honest, when it first happened, I'm, like, going, I'm, like, damn, bro, this is, like, I've been doing this, but a lot of this shit is new to me. Like, I ain't been all these places and shit and do this and do all this. Like, I went from literally, bro, like, 50 people in the show to fucking 5,000 in, in the sec, like, so cool. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this is crazy. But I've been performing my whole life, though. But I'm saying when that time happens and that shit comes, that's what I'm saying. It feels like it's so quick, bro. I feel like it's so quick. But even though you've been putting in all this time, like, if you're like me, my story's different. I've been doing this my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you ended up doing a national tour with Lil Uzi Vert. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was, like, my that first tour. That was your tour. first, like, that major was, tour? That was my first tour. Yeah, it was dope. And Uzi, yeah, shout out to Uzi for that. That was love. I appreciate that. Yeah, and then you had uh, the Life of a Dark Rose tour, but then yeah. I guess that had to be cut short because you got sick. Hell yeah, I was sick as shit, but that was, tour was lit as fuck. You and XXXTentacion, do you guys know each other at all? I didn't know him, no. I didn't know him, no, like that, but. But, but... but he was sort of in the same kind of group of artists yeah. as, as yourself. Yeah. You know, kind of like the new breed of artists who really had a different type of music. I feel it more sort of you know, emotional. Yeah, in terms yeah, of... no, yeah. I talked to X a couple of times. I never actually got to like link with him, but I talked to him and stuff. And yeah, yeah he's very deep. He's like, he's like me, bro. I guess he's, I feel like he's a little bit more, he was a little bit more open with it though. He's a little bit more open to, you know what I mean? His fans and stuff. That, that was dope, bro. Well, uh, June 18th, 2018, right around the time that you're just getting hot to death, mm -hmm. he ends up getting killed uh, over a robbery. Uh, when you found out about that, how'd you feel? Like this shit's crazy. That's how I felt. Like it's it's crazy, bro. Like all the rap, bro. Just the rapper scene nowadays, bro. And all this, like everybody's just, you know what I mean. Like people are dying. This shit's just not cool, bro. At all. Like, and I don't know how other rappers feel, but I'm sure they do. Like I'm talking about my generation, like the younger ones. Shit, me. It's like that shit leaves you big paranoia, bro. Cause you think of like, damn, bro. What if that was me? You feel me, like. He's that nigga was X doing normal shit. That nigga X was doing normal shit that I do. Like, that's the type of shit I do. Go in the bike store, look at a bike, and like, that's normal shit. And come out and get got, like, damn, bro. And it's taking that quick. Yeah, and, I interviewed uh, I interviewed Wi Fi's funeral, uh, and they were super close. Yeah. And, uh, Shout and he, out to Wi Fi. That's my boy. In the yeah. middle of the interview and had to just walk away and just get himself together. Yeah, uh, bro. It's weird, bro. It's weird. Yeah. Sad. Well, then you end up having your own, you know, robbery situation. Yeah. Uh, I guess in LA. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about what happened? Shit. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't even want to talk about that shit, bro. Okay, uh, fair enough. But, yeah. you know, I'll just say it was a, allegedly someone pointed a gun at you and tried to take something from you. Uh, yeah, just know I that... didn't get robbed, just know that. Right, shit. right. Well, I guess allegedly you slapped the dude and ran. Yeah. Um, was that when you ended up getting off the internet? No, I mean, shit, I was all, uh, I don't remember that time. I felt like that was a little earlier when that, bro, that was like right when I dropped my, that was right when I, that was like right after Life of Dark Rose dropped and I was out there. Yeah, that was early, bro. Okay. Yeah. I guess you said, uh, go and go. Y'all can have this internet shit. Bye. And then you were just out. Yeah, no, I wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't just because of that shit, but it was just like weird. You know, I'm feeling like, damn, I just blow it up. I'm not that I just blow it up, but shit, I stay out the way. I don't do nothing to anybody. So I'm like, shit, I'm out here just shopping with my friends, you know, just out here shopping with like two of my homies and shit. And then we just, you know what I mean? And then dudes just try me. I'm like, damn, bro. Like, I, and I come from, bro, if you see where I come from, I'm in Waynesboro. Like, where I come from, I'm just like, I really like, I, I stay out the way. I don't be in the mix of all this shit. So I'm like, what did these dudes try me for? And I'm the whole way out in LA and this is some big ass, like, it's just some whole other shit. Yeah. I don't even want to get into full yeah. detail with that. I'm just blessed to be here, you dig? Well, then in February, 2019, uh, you go on tour with Lil Pump. Yeah. And, and Lil Pump was, was hot to death at that point. Yeah, we both was lit. We both was popping yeah. at that time. Uh, any crazy stories? With Lil Pump? Um, nah, that's when things, see, that's when thing Pump's cool as fuck, bro. Pump is chill. He's like a regular person. That's what people don't realize. See, people take that internet shit and they think, oh, this is like da da da. Me and this nigga just chilling, smoking blunts every night, just getting high as shit, like performing. We we doing, we just having fun, just doing fun shit, bro. Like, 
enjoying a tour like two normal ass kids, bro. Yeah, I mean, as you should. I guess, you know, as I as guess people think, see, I'm one of them people, I don't like the, I think everybody's different. So Pump is how he is. I set Pump for how he is. So I love that nigga for him, you feel me? Like he's yeah. fire. He just full of energy for sure though. That nigga's the energy. He's he's lit, bro. He's turning. Oh, yeah. he, he's a fun person to hang out with for sure. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. So then March 1st, 2019, you dropped your debut album, Shelby. Yeah. Is there really a difference between an, your album and your mixtape? Because they're both all original music. I don't, yeah, I guess, you know, that's how, that's what they, that's pretty much like nowadays it's just pretty much best to just drop albums because it's just like a mixtape, bro. You get what I'm saying? But the album is a little bit more work. It's it's just more serious. It's just taking more yeah. serious. Probably a mixtape, you could have a little bit more fun or something. I don't know, but they're pretty yeah, much And you like named the, the album thing. after your mom. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Okay. And, and uh, I mean, the debut single off that album was I. Yeah. Which is, uh, I mean, one of your biggest songs. I mean, yeah, I love that. It's the first song on Spotify right now. Yeah, that's one of my favorite shits. And, and in the song, you said, uh, you know, things changed since I lost my bro. That That's the friend you talked about when you got your first tattoo? No, nah, no, nah, he's still with me, bro. He's still here. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's still here. No, I'm talking okay, about my, so I'm just talking about my friend. I'm talking about my friend. My man's just locked up and shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Free ride right. team, nigga. Oh, we got shit. Well, uh, you kept you kept dropping songs. Yeah. Um, you know, you did breathe. Uh, you had a song, uh, "Burning Memories," with Machine Gun Kelly, and, and you're actually showing up with a lot of know. other people. You had a, you had a song with Wiz Khalifa at one point too, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did a song with. Wiz. Yeah, so you're basically, I mean, the catalog is just growing and growing at this point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and then in July, you and your uh, girlfriend ended up having a son. Yep. Who cocky. you named after yourself. Yes, sir. So somebody Can else do got my name, you dig, but he did. It's him. How old were you at the time? Like 22? 21. 21. I just turned 22. Now, I mean, at the time, you're not typical 21 year old who's who's working at McDonald's and trying yeah. to, you know, right. <laughs> trying to make ends meet. You actually have money and and you have, you know, income and stability. Uh, how did that feel to to have this kid early, but you actually have the money to do it right? Should have felt good, bro. I just know my son. You know, what I mean, he's taking care of him. He's in a good position. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that he's all right and I can actually be there for him and make sure he's straight and make sure him and his mom good. And you know what I'm saying? Just take care of what I got to take care of for him. Right. And I guess uh, your dad had a baby like not too long before that? Yeah. Uh -huh. A couple, yeah, like two, three years. Okay. So so your son has a, an aunt that's almost the same age as him. Yeah, uh huh. My little sister Keo, yep. That's what's up. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Uh, and then in March you dropped "Have My Way" with Lil Dirk. Yep, having my way. Shout out to Dirk, yo, man. He going fucking crazy right now, and my album's out now too. Well, well, that song "Having My Way" is actually on your your second album. Yeah, right? yeah. It's on my album coming up. Yeah, I'm bothered. Sound okay. Now. Uh. Well, well, number one, I'll have it my way. Um, Dirk has that line that I've heard before. Which one? You talking about the yeah, little baby? Yeah, there, there we go. Yeah, so he's quoting little baby on that song. Drip too hard, don't stand too close. Yeah, like that, kind of, yeah. Yeah, okay. just rearranging the words a little bit, yeah. Uh, there we go. But yeah, as you know, them, them what, niggas, what they like before. family, bro. Everybody like family. You know, all them, they all in Atlanta, too. They all like family. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's all good. Yeah. Now, I'm just trying to remember where it came from. Yeah, I heard yeah. It. I'm like, yeah. I've heard this before. Yeah. Dope song, by the way. Thank uh, you. Dope bro. song. Like you said, Dirk's on fire right now. Yeah, I had to have that one on my album, too. That joint been going up, too. I love that song. I can't wait to perform that shit. For sure. It'll be fun. Well, the, the Unbothered uh, album cover is kind of an interesting cover. Like, yeah. you're in a room, like what looks like a bedroom, and there's just a lot of 
yeah, it's stuff like all spy around. Is there a significance shit. around that? Yeah, it's like I spy type shit. It's just a whole bunch of random shit. Okay, and why that name? Unbothered. Um, it's just like shit. When I was recording this album, I was just like looking at it like I was in my own world. I really wasn't letting nobody bother me. I just wanted to make the music I wanted to make. And just, you know, have fun, have fun with it. That's pretty much what I was doing, just having fun with it, making fun turn up shit, but still some of my heartfelt shit. But this shit's more like energy performing type shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I haven't listened. I mean, I guess four songs got released from that album. Yeah, I think so. So far as the on site, okay, having my way, it's three. And a riot. A riot, yeah, it's four. Yeah, right. Okay. And then, you know, I guess. A lot of people started started criticizing you that this is not the little skies that you know they knew before because the style slightly changed and you right. actually responded. You said, Y'all gotta stop wishing I was the same person and made the same music. When I came to the game, I'm a human being, I'm growing, I'm changing too. I can't be the same person I was three years ago. My life's a whole other type of whole other type of time now. Right. Uh this would be the last time addressing this. Right. Um you know, he said, uh, y'all get on here and attack an artist for not making the same song over and over again. We people too. And personally, I make what I feel because we want to try to make different sounds. Now, nah, anyways, love all my real supporters. Y'all know the vibes. Yeah. Um, do you feel like people criticize you for, for evolving, essentially? Hell yeah, but I'm starting to learn. Like, see, recently I've been, recently I've been thinking more on that shit. I'm starting to learn. I ain't really, like, I'm not one to pay attention to what people say, but I guess I kind of have been more, but... That shit's not healthy for you, so I'm not gonna be doing that shit, stressing myself out about what people think about me or whatever. Like, as long as I like what I'm making, I love what I'm making, then that's what should matter. My fans fucking with it. That's what should matter. Well, you said that you try to avoid drugs as much as possible because you saw how negatively it impacted the lives of some of your old friends. Yeah. Uh, I mean, did you see, well, number one, did you know Lil Peep at all? Nah, I ain't know okay. that like that. But you guys were kind of in the same, you know, genre yeah. overall. I yeah. mean, when you saw that he overdosed and died, I guess fentanyl, uh, how did you feel? Shit's fucked up, bro. It's fucked up. Shit sucks. It sucks. But people don't see, ask- that's what people don't understand, though, bro. As an artist, like, before people sit there and judge, you got to sit there and really look at a person and... It's going to be hard for you to understand because you're not them and you're not going to ever fully understand what that person's going through, what that person's feeling. You know what I'm saying? So like it's easier it's easier said than done to say you're going to stop doing this or stop doing that, da 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 da, but you know what I'm saying? You still got your own demons, you got your own problems, you got your own shit going on in your head, so it's just weird. Yeah. Like even with I you mean- know how life been recently and shit like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not perfect, bro. Ain't everybody ain't perfect. Of course, as humans, we all try to avoid drugs and shit, but this ain't the perfect world, bro. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've I've dabbled before, yeah. uh, you know, I've I've done done ecstasy, I've done acid, uh, I've done shrooms, <laughs> you know, turf. shit like that. But then I remember when I was young, when I was how old was I? At twenty three, one of my best friends overdosed and died off cocaine. Damn. And it was like being at that funeral. See, I, was I like, never right, This no is something harsh. I'm not gonna fuck with right here if yeah, this is if this is the the side effect of cocaine right. nah i'm good right so i never i never dabbled in that I feel you. but you know in, in music sometimes it's a very kind of drugged out environment yeah you know you hang out i mean i mean little pump who you went on tour with he's had his whole thing with lean where he would be drinking it then he would throw it all away and he'd stop and i don't know where he is with it right now but it yeah. seems like he's had his own struggles with it yeah, I'm not perfect either, bro. I have my shits with it too. I have my shits with the drink. Like, I ain't fuck with many drugs, but the it's been the drink and the weed for me. That's what it's been for me. But it's one of them things, bro. Like I said, like we young rappers, we in this shit. You got you got paranoia, you got anxiety, you got a whole list of things that come with this shit, bro. Like, and it's different for everybody. I don't know why other artists do what they do, or other people do drugs or whatever. But you know what I mean, like. I can't speak on what other people do or how they are and shit, but shit, I know me. I I I under I I get it more though. Like I understand, it's just it's it's fucked up because it sucks, bro. Because we in a lifestyle, like I said, we gotta watch our back. We gotta do like rappers, especially nowadays, bro. Like I feel that, bro. I got paranoia. You get me? Like I be worked up about this shit, bro. Like I got real life anxiety, so I feel when you know sometimes nigga need to calm down and nigga need to relieve some stress. 
You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I mean, I interviewed Mo three. Uh, yeah. You know who recently got killed? Yeah, rest in peace, uh, to Boosie. Bro. Boosie just got shot. He's a regular on my show. Mm. Um, me and King Von were trying to schedule an interview the morning yeah. he got killed. Uh, that shit's fucked up, bro. You know, we it's like it's not Jimmy even Wapo. cool no more, bro. Uh, it's not even cool. It's... He got killed. Young Greatness, we interviewed him yeah. getting killed. Yeah. Um, G Money was scheduled to be interviewed. Uh, me and Pop Smoke talked two days before he got rest killed. In peace, about scheduling something niggas, next week. Man. It's fucked up, bro. It's a long list of very young men who have all died from gun violence. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I feel you, man. I mean, I could feel the anxiety. And, and you have to get on stage exposed, not knowing who's there. You got to walk around and you're, you know, you've got face tats. You're very okay. identifiable. That's what I'm saying. See, my level's on a whole nother level because it's really like, you see me, you know who I am if you know. So you're not going to like. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, yeah, bro. It's just like nowadays rappers is the best thing we could do is just stay alert, bro. Stay alert, stay woke, pay attention. You know what I mean? And stay safe, yeah. stay safe. No, I agree. I mean, people always ask why I'm always behind the camera. And it's like, well, because I get to actually move around without having to always have security with me. Yeah, you're, because yeah. And and I like I like that like yeah. I'm I'm trying to be less famous than than I am. Okay, so you got your album coming out. Yeah. I'm Number one, how excited it. are you about this? Shit, I'm ex I'm ready to get it out, bro. I've been wanting to get my album out. I'm ready to get the shit out, and then yeah, just keep working, keep dropping, keep coming with music videos, content. You know what I mean? Just want to keep having fun, keep exploding. Okay, so you got a little Dirk on the album. Who yeah. else do you got on it? I got Dirk. I got Wiz on there. I got Dirk and Wiz. Yeah, shout out to, shout out to Wiz too, bro, because that's like one of my favorite artists too. He looked out. I did the, we did the for real for real song. We had that. Now we making another one, but this one's more like a chill vibe. I'm excited. Not a lot of features. I yeah. mean, you see a. Uh, a lot of new rappers these days, it almost looks like a like a movie soundtrack. <laughs> right. It's like every song got like 10 people on it, but really it's just mostly you. Yeah, bro. I mean, I don't have too many rapper friends, bro. Like I do, I, I have friends, but I don't have like, these ain't people I be with all the time. You know what I mean? So like shit, like Dirk, that's my boy. Like heavy, I fuck with Dirk. I fuck with Wiz too. I ain't hung out with him in a minute, you know, cause COVID and shit, shit been a little wild lately, but. Those are my niggas. Like, I fuck with them, like family type shit. So, anybody I work with pretty much be like family, bro, for the most part. Okay. Um, I mean, what are some of your main goals in the next couple of years after this album comes out? My main goals this next couple of years, shit, bro, to just to keep um, growing, keep elevating, bro, keep prospering. That's what I pray for every year. That's like my biggest thing. I just want to keep going up the ladder. I want to be as big as I can be. You know what I mean? Drop more music. I want to have more fucking videos, but I want to make crazier videos. I feel like I got good videos, but I want to make crazier videos. You know what I'm saying? Some crazier shit. Hey, man, we got the fan base yeah. to support all that. <laughs> right, uh, yeah. <laughs> what you pulled off. And, and I think I think that the dopest part of the interview is, you know, more so than the, the success, but how long it took you to get to that success. Yeah, bro. Because, yeah. In music, anyone could have a hit record. Anyone could stumble onto something and it, it's catchy. Right. And people See, and people run with it. Right. And that's what people don't realize. The hardest thing in this shit, bro. The hardest thing. Like, I understood that from the jump. But the hardest thing in this shit is to keep it, bro. If you understand what I'm saying. Like, people don't realize, yeah, you can do this. But you got to keep it, bro. You got to maintain it. You got to keep shit, you know what I mean? Like people don't understand cause you can just do this and then everything just fall down. You gotta keep working at it, bro. You know what I mean? Like it just don't stop here. See, that's for me too. I need to do it more cause I need to live more life. I feel like I don't be celebrating like my accomplishments that much, bro. I have a hard time doing that. So I be working so much. I don't really celebrate anything I fucking achieve. But at the same time, it's like, I be having opportunities to, it's just like, man, I'm so, I be stressing out about what's next so much that it's hard for me to enjoy when I'm supposed to be having fun. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know. I'm like a young nigga. I'm 22 with a fucking 50 year old mindset and shit like that ass. <laughs> I'll be on some other shit. Yeah, I, I mean, 
I feel like being an artist is the hardest job in the world because, you know, look, if, if I sit down, you know, we just did a Mike Tyson interview. Like I know sitting down with Mike Tyson, if I ask certain questions, it's going to get about this many views and I can kind of predict what's going to happen ahead of time. Right. You could have the biggest artist feature with the hottest producer and the song could come out whack and no one's going to listen to it. Yes, yeah, facts. There's people yeah. that make great music, bro, and nobody even knows who they are. Like I listen to, I listen to artists that a lot of people don't even know who they are. But to me, they're fire as fuck. I'm like, and you be wondering how, how the fuck don't you? But like, I understand it's different for everybody, bro. Like everybody's time, everybody's is is different. Some you might have this thing, but this other person might have this other thing that the label wants. You get what I'm saying? It's different. You might make us songs, but you don't have the image. You don't have the look. You don't. It's different, bro. And the labels and shit, that's how they really be looking at that shit too, bro. So. Yeah. Well, listen, little guys, man, congratulations. Uh, what you pulled off is is the hardest thing in the world. And, I mean, you know firsthand because your dad tried to do it. Yeah. You, you watched your dad your whole life trying to get to For sure. even a small portion of where mm -hmm. you got to. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's, it's dope that, um, you know, now you have rappers having kids who become rappers. <laughs> right. Yeah, my biggest thing, my son, bro, I don't even want him to, I'm not even going to mention him, uh, mention him about being a rapper, bro. I just want him to do what he want to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want him to do what he wants to do. I want him to like what he likes, whatever the fuck it is, daddy going to support it. Like, if he wants yeah. to rap, he can do that. You know what I mean? Whatever. But I'm not going to force it on him. I ain't one of those parents. I want my kid to be a kid. I want him to live. You know what I'm saying? So if at 16 he said, Dad, I want to get a I want to get my first face tat just like you, well, what are you gonna tell? Shit. I don't know. I'm like, we gotta talk to your mom, nigga. <laughs> I ain't about to get my ass in trouble, nigga. Fuck that. All right, Lil Skies, man. Appreciate appreciate the interview, man. Congrats on everything you've accomplished, man. It's phenomenal. And like I said, the catalog is crazy and it sounds like you're just getting started. Yeah, thanks, bro. I'm just getting started for sure. My album's out now. Unbothered. Make sure y'all go get that. Shout out to all my fans. I love y'all. I appreciate the support. Never give up on me. I'm going to keep pushing. Y'all just keep riding with me. We're going to turn up. I appreciate you too, bro. Thanks for having me. Much love. Much love, man. Until next time. Yes, Peace. sir. For sure. Peace.